Okay, guys, it's a new video, new semester. What I'm going to talk with you today is about the law of iterated, of iterated expectations. Okay, and this is something that is not usually taught in the curriculums like, uh, you know, FRMs, but I still think it's actually very important because it gives you a powerful incentive of how to calculate prices and how to calculate uh, iterated expectations. So what we're going to do, we're going to play a game, right? We're going to throw, to throw a coin and record the number of times it takes to get one. And then you are going to pay me this amount of dollars. So if you are getting 0, 0, 0, 1, it's three dollars. If you are getting zero 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 one, it's going to be five dollars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Now, the the question is, okay, what is the price that you will pay for this game, or what is the expected value of this game, or in other words, right, how many times you throw until you get this, you know, until you get one. Now, we are going to assume that one we we get with probability p. And zero will get probability one minus p. So it's a little bit more general situation that we had in class. Okay? And now comes the following trick. I'm here. I'm here, right? And then I'm throwing the coin and I can get two outcomes. The first outcome I'm getting one. The second outcome I'm getting zero. What I want to do now, I want to apply the following criteria. The price here, right, is a weighted average of the prices here and here, okay? So if for example, or the expectation here is a weighted average of the expectations here and here, okay? This is actually pretty straightforward. If you know your expectation here, and you know your expectation here, right? Your expectation here will be a weighted average of them. Now, what are the weights? The weights are the probabilities that you are going to get it, okay? So now, here, now let's analyze the situation. This is like a decision tree, okay? This is like a classic that occurs all the time in option pricing or in, you know, or in stock pricing, okay? And we'll talk about this a little bit more, okay? Now, here, what will be my outcome? Here, I'm going to get $1, okay? So P times 1, this is going to be my expected value here. I'm going to get $1. What am I going to get here? I don't know how much I'm getting here. But what I'm claiming is that the price here, let's say X, and the price here should be the same. Why is that? Because you know, when you throw this, when you throw it here, right, you did not change anything. The situation did not change. Whatever the price was here, you throw zero, you start again. So the price here and the price here are the same. So therefore, it's going to be P minus one, but now times X plus one. Because let's say the price here is five, because you throw one more, it's going to be five plus one. And this equals to X. So now let's, uh, uh, let's try to solve this equation. So we have p, mi p times 1 plus p minus 1 times x plus p minus 1. This equals to x, right? So now, uh, yes, uh, 1 minus p, sorry. It's my mistake, 1 minus p. And here it's 1 minus p. Sorry about that. I do apologize, okay? 1 minus p, okay? So now, p and, one mi and p goes away. And you are getting here y mi 1 minus p times x equals to 1 plus plus 1 equals to x. Here, right, now you take this to the other side, you are getting 1 equals p times x, and then x equals 1 minus x. Uh, 1 minus p uh, and x equals to 1 minus p. What does it mean? What does this number mean? Okay. It means that, for example, if your probability of success is third, right, on average, when you are going to get the first appearance of one, it will take you three, three, you know, three, uh, three throws. If you're, uh, you know, if you throw a coin, okay, and you are getting, let's say, one with probability of one over ten and zero with probability uh, nine over ten, right, it will take you basically ten times to get one. And this is kind of intuitive, right? You throw one, tuck, 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 and you get this as, as much as, you know, as much as you want to, okay? Now, 
This is what is called the law of iterated expectations. Why is it a law of iterated expectations? Because what you are getting here, right, is actually the expected value conditional on the fact that you threw zero the first time. The, the fact that you threw zero the first time, right, the expected value here equals to the expected value here. And then what you're doing, you're actually weighting, right, your, expect, your conditional expected values by their probabilities. So that's actually a very, 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 very powerful technique. And I showed this, and I showed now, if you want to do it directly, how it is going to look like. This is going to look like very ugly, right? Because what does it mean to, uh, to do it directly? You want to look on n, and you want to see what is the probability of getting 1 at the end. So it's going to be the probability p n minus 1, right, times 1 minus p, because you get n minus 1 throws 1 minus p, times n, and now you need to sum this series. Okay? And you, of course you can do that. Of course you can sum it, but it's actually pretty tricky, right? You need basically to, just to give you a hint, you want to sum, thing, to sum like that, right? So what you want to do in order to sum like that, first you want to sum something like that, which is 1 over 1 minus x, and then you kind of notice that if you take the derivative of this guy, it's going to be n times x n minus 1, so times x, this is exactly what you are getting here. So first you take the derivative here. It's 1 minus 1 minus x minus 1 to the square. And then you multiply by x, right? So it's, it's actually pretty, pretty tricky, right? This actually bypasses all this uh, nonsense and it gives you in a very clean, you know, in a very clean way. Let's, uh, let us do another example that I did in class. What will happen if you throw two zeros consecutively? Right? But now the probability of, of, of getting this is going to be half. So this is actually, right, much easier to do it in this way than to do it in this way. So now you analyze it again, okay? You start with a point, then you go like this, right? So here, let's say you throw zero, and here you throw one. Now, if you throw one, you have to start again, because this row did not do anything, right? So the price here and the price here are the same. So then you have that this will contribute half x plus one. Okay, because this is the price here, the price here, or the expected value here, expected value here will be the same. Now, what happens here? Here you will once again have, have a decision tree. Either you are getting here, or you are getting here. So, if you are getting 0, 0, right, how many you will have? You are going to get basically 2. So, it's going to be quarter times 2. Plus, and now what will you get here? It's going to be quarter, but now you have two steps instead of uh, one. So, you have x plus 2. Right? Once again, because you threw one, you have to start again, all over again. So the price here and the price here will be the same, right? And this has to be equal x. So now, right, your equation is, let me write it here, right? It's going to be half x plus 1 plus uh, 2 plus half plus uh, quarter x plus 2 equals x, right? If you solve it, right? You will, you will find out that x equals 6. Okay? You just open it. I mean, you know, you open it. You have half here, quarter here, quarter of x. So you have 3 quarter x, right, uh, equals to x. And here you have half. You have another half. So you have, uh, you know, uh, 3 halves plus 3 quarter x. Then x equals, you know, 3 halves x equals quarter x. 3 halves equals quarter x. x equals 6. Okay? Once again, the law of iterated expectations is in action, okay? First, what you do, you find out what is your expected value in each one, and then you discount back, back by the probability. So here you have three passes. This is the first pass, the probability of quarter. This is the second pass, the probability of quarter. And this is the third pass with the probability of half, right? So these three guys, right, everyone has its own expected value. The expected value here is two, because you throw it two times, right? and you get 2 because you're, you're done. Here's the expected value is x itself, right? Because you throw 1 and you know you are actually coming back because the fact that you threw 1 did not, did not promote you to the goal. And here, right, if you throw 0 and 1, once again, you're not getting promoted to the goal. So this guy, right, is coming from this portion, right, will come from the law of iterated expectations. And it has to equal x because it has to be equal to the, you know, to the value here. Okay? Formally, you can write the, you know, the law of iterated expectation or something like that. That, you know, 
the expected value at time t of the future, right, equals to basically, you know, equals to basically the expected value of x, right? Something like that. So basically, if you have, if you have, you know, if, if in time t, right, or like this, if in time t, right, you have all the expected value at time t plus 1, let's say you calculate it, then you basically look on the weighted probabilities and you get your, you know, and you get your uh, expected value at time t, okay? Or you can just forget about these form formalities, right? And you can just use this kind of diagram, right? The idea is that you're having a tree of decisions. You find, you know, the expected value in each one, or you find the price in each one, and then you basically weight it by probabilities, okay? Now, it's, it's exactly the same if you think about returns, right? Let's say that you have return one and you have return two, and you have, and you have a weights of this return, right, in a portfolio. Weight one and weight two, those are your returns. So your total return is going to be W1 R1 plus W2 R2 equals to R, right? This is exactly what's happening here. This is exactly what's happening here. You can think about this one of those guys as a pass with a return, right? And then you basically weight it back to your current return. So if you throw, if you throw one, right, your return will not change. If you throw zero, then you have this kind of decision tree that will split, okay? Now, this portion, right, this tree is how you price option. This is how you price anything in finance. This is how you do risk in anything in finance. Basically, you know, this kind of small diagram is actually extremely powerful. All right? So I'm going to see you in class and uh, enjoy and have fun with a lot of, expecta of ex iterated expectations, which is actually very dear to my heart. Okay? Nihao, ah, no, no. Zhaizhen.